with sustainable energy comes sustainable jobs. Ethanol is nothing more than liquid solar energy. I'm glad to see that we're going back to fuel alcohol. Um, it was uh, basically the, the birth of industry in this country, you know, was, uh, was born of a, a, an alcohol industry. Hi, I'm Carl Petzold, and uh, I'm standing next to the Silver Cloud 3600, which was manufactured uh, at our distillery in North Carolina. Uh, I've uh, been researching distillation for about 20 years and been exposed to it for 30. Uh, I've been uh, running my own distillery for about four years now, and and. Uh, Pete Von Rubin and uh, a group from Wisconsin uh, came down to it for a visit and they asked me if I would create a distillery for them and and uh, uh, so we, uh, Pete commissioned uh, the Silver Cloud 3600 and this unit right here uh, pr will produce about a thousand gallons of ethanol a week. Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, fuel ethanol uh, really is uh, uh, a sustainable fuel that uh, that we feel, you know, can can take hold at a at a local level and and ultimately be a, a, a sidestep to the to the current infrastructure of of uh, petroleum. Um, you know, society's been spoon fed uh, these petroleum products for a long time, and and it's not a necessity. You know, we can uh, we can have a, a homespun sustainable energy that uh, uh, starts at a local level and and. Uh, uh, you know, a, a local distillery and, and a small cooperative uh, in a community um, and a, a distillery this size can provide energy for a number of families um, and, you know, as I said, uh, with sustainable energy comes sustainable jobs. Uh, you know, uh, when, when you're creating an energy that's in demand 100% of the time, that means that it requires work 100% of the time and, uh, you know, we here of late we've seen some some difficult times in this country and and I think that uh, the the superstructure of uh, of big business is collapsing under its own weight to some extent and you know uh, fuel alcohol has been around and uh, uh, this country for a long time and it's been around uh, the world a lot longer than that you know it's been it's played an integral role in in society uh, uh, f and really was there at the birthplace of, the the birthplace excuse me of industry and and uh, uh, ultimately uh, I think now we're coming full circle in that we see that uh, um, uh, fuel alcohol is a way to that we can turn back to uh, a sustainable uh, homespun energy that's uh, not very difficult to to create and uh, ultimately uh, I think that's the the way that the country is going. Carl, can you walk me through exactly how the still works, please? Yes, I can. Uh, ultimately, you would you would take a a feedstock um, of your choosing, whatever's available, and uh, break those feedstocks down into sugars for fermentation. And uh, when you inoculate a, a sugar solution with yeast, what the yeast does is it produces ethanol, heat, and carbon dioxide. So uh, you know the the ethanol that's produced um, in fermentation can be separated out through distillation. And this unit right here um, is efficient enough to where uh, if you fill the kettle with uh, 200 gallons of, of mash and it's at 20% alcohol by volume, you're going to see 100% of that alcohol uh, uh, reclaimed through the stripper column and coming out as uh, a usable, high-proof automotive fuel. Um, now I say automotive, fuel alcohol is more dynamic than simply being an automotive fuel. Um, you know, you can use it to cook with, you can use it to heat your house, to light your home, uh, heat your hot water. Uh, you know, uh, I've been telling the solar guys here at the fair, you know, the, the one thing that they're not really realizing is that uh, ethanol is nothing more than liquid solar energy. Um, and uh, the, the, the plant mass that, that does photosynthesis um, and ultimately stores the sun's energy as uh, starches and sugars and cellulose. Cellulose is just a, a complex chain of starches that can be broken back down into sugars and, and ultimately fermented. So 
you know, there's a, a plethora of feedstocks that you can use. You know, it just depends on where you live and what's available. Uh, the easiest way to do it, and the way I like to do it at, at my personal distillery at home, is uh, a direct sugar method. Uh, there's a lot less work involved, and, and it's, uh, you know, there's a lot of waste sugars that are readily accessible. And, you know, as far as a, 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 a community utilizing a distillery, um, uh, in a small cooperative manner where whereby uh, people in the community bring their wastes from uh, their 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 farm efforts or uh, perhaps even waste from a bakery and if they brought those products to a distillery for fermentation and the distiller would process them into a, a usable fuel uh, you know then you've you've developed a, a, a symbiosis between uh, all of uh, the aspects of that community, be it agricultural or uh, food service or, or you know, uh, whatever the, the feedstocks are that you've chosen. And, uh, you know, you can turn those waste products into fuel uh, to, power, to power the community. And when you've done that, you've e essentially sidestepped the current infrastructure of, of uh, petroleum. Uh, and, uh, you know, you've said, okay, you know, we we can do this ourselves you know this is uh, this is something that that we can do in a sustainable manner and and you know we can dictate our own our own prices here and and uh, and even you know uh, uh, maintain a, a way of life without making a whole lot of big changes you know it's just that community at that point would would have said okay you know we can we can do this ourselves you know we don't need to be spoon-fed anymore so that's what uh, uh, the the local homespun ethanol movement is all about you know is uh, sidestepping the current infrastructure without changing your lifestyle you know uh, and when society can do that um, you know it, you you sink those deep roots in and 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 you can't shake that up you know it's a uh, it's something that uh, is definitely a, a movement in this country that's taking hold and you know I'm glad to see that we're going back to fuel alcohol um, it was. Uh, Basically, the the birth of industry in this country, you know, was uh, was born of a, a, an alcohol industry, and uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, it was uh, overrun by uh, other industries. And and fuel alcohol is the cleanest fuel that you know that you can that you can burn as far as a, a motor vehicle. Uh, you're not you're not going to get any better than that. And uh, you know, it's it's got plenty of power. If you've ever seen a, a top fuel dragster, an alcohol dragster. You know, if you want to argue about the differences between gasoline and and uh, and fuel alcohol, all you have to do is sit in the seat of one of those things and uh, and hang on to something, and you know we'll we'll talk about power at the end of the run. So, uh, you know, fuel alcohol is a is a dynamic fuel. You know, and there's more than it can do than just be a motor fuel. You know, it can touch every aspect of your life, everywhere that you need energy. Uh, fuel alcohol can provide that energy to you. How the still works is uh, <clears throat> you take your feedstock and and uh, when it's fermented you you drain your your mash into the the kettle of the still here and we fire a boiler up and and turn the system on and and what happens is as the 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 steam azotrope of water and alcohol rise through the stripper column here that's the the big stainless steel column uh, that column is packed with uh, metal shavings or uh, paw rings and those provide a large surface area inside the column where steam can condense to and then re-evaporate and, and as the steam rises through the system it uh, creates a counter current flow uh, and ultimately uh, there's in the top of the system uh, about a hundred feet of copper coil that uh, uh, you run cool water through and and uh, that's the our condensing medium so in a stripper column like this when you're controlling the temperature of the column you're controlling the proof of the alcohol so uh, um, once we achieve the desired temperature from uh, from heating up the kettle which is about 174 175 degrees uh, in the top of the column then we'll start to see pure ethanol running down through the system and the ethanol runs uh, into this proofing system here and uh, there it can be uh, uh, run uh, through these uh, uh, DC solenoid valves uh, and directed to the the proper uh, uh, fuel receptacle um, uh, this system actually runs off of a 1250 watt solar panel 
so you can you can operate this system off of the grid. Uh, it doesn't require uh, uh, a service panel from uh, uh, from the power lines. You know, you you can set it up wherever you need to set it up out in the field, and and uh, you know put you a building around it and 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 get to work so this is a this is a pretty simple system it's uh, pretty easy to run and you know it, do, it doesn't take a it's it's not rocket science you know distillation has been done for for uh, thousands of years and and what we've done is with the silver cloud we've been able to to refine the finer points of distillation and, and really take a scientific look at what does it take to make a fuel grade alcohol and we've implemented the techniques that we've learned over time and and we've got some uh, some good materials and some good equipment here and and the silver cloud is what we came up with Th this to me really is the pinnacle of distillation as far as small scale goes right here because this unit is able to produce hundred and ninety six proof alcohol which is the azotrope minimum that's the max you can get from distillation um, and you know that that 196 proof fuel can be mixed with gasoline, but you know it's it's better to run off straight ethanol if you can. Now the federal government requires that you denature your ethanol to to run in a in a, in a motor vehicle, um, but you don't have to use gasoline or benzene or anything like that to denature. You can use uh, ether, which is basically another form of alcohol, um, and uh, you know up here in Wisconsin the weather's pretty cold, so. You know, uh, uh, there's uh, some cold starting issues that you might have with your vehicle, but those are easily remedied. And and uh, fuel alcohol can be done all over the world. And 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 uh, this unit right here can make that happen. You know, a unit this size could provide enough fuel uh, for for a, a small community. Um, and like I said before, you know, if if that community uh, gets together and develops a co-op and and provides the feedstocks uh, for this operation, then then they all benefit, and uh, you know nobody's uh, nobody's left out in the cold. What we've done with the 3600 is is we've taken years and years of trial and error, um, you know, as far as uh, distillation, what works and what doesn't work, and we took a really close look at, you know, what does the system need to produce a fuel quality alcohol, and the answers that we came up with to those questions have all been implemented right here in this system you know this this system is stainless steel from top to bottom so so anybody who purchases a system from Petzold distilleries you know their grandkids are going to be running this system now ultimately as far as operation goes you know you might look at this uh, this stripper column here and say well what is that big bulbous thing down there at the bottom I call that an, an initiator system and what happens is you know, alcohol is lighter than water. It has a lower specific gravity. So, so you know, as the the alcohol and water mix rise up into the column, right here they lose a little bit of pressure, and uh, there's an aluminum plate inside there, um, and that plate is put together in, in a manner where uh, it initializes the flow inside the column for the 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 refining of the alcohol and rectification of the alcohol and these systems right here run so smoothly you know the old distilleries they would start off with a high proof and a run and throughout the run the proof would go down and down and down and down until it was basically an unusable mix of, of water and alcohol but this system right here the entire run acts like the four shot it'll make 196 proof from start to finish and that's the azotrope minimum you cannot get a finer alcohol from distillation to get any uh, more of a pure alcohol to get that last two percent of water out you have got to use a molecular sieve or a corn grit dryer Talk to me about how an individual might use this or a group of farmers or what's the real vision, what's the real possibilities of, of what we're looking at here? Well the possibilities are endless Kelly. Um, as far as this particular unit goes, um, you know this is a this is a pretty large production size you know as far as a thousand gallons a week it, it takes a pretty pretty big infrastructure to, to uh, to, to make this puppy run and, and you know you're gonna have to circulate about 10 to 15 thousand gallons of beer a week um, but as far as an individual goes uh, you know a, a smaller more more potable uh, unit uh, you know is is uh, a great idea and uh, you know we need to get one of those together and bring it up here for display as well because you know there's there's been some couples that have said well we only want to make 200 gallons you know a month for ourselves and that's very doable and in, you know a unit this size has a purpose and you know you want to bring the right tools for the right job so uh, you know this particular unit the 3600 you know this guy right here could provide you know as much as 10 families with enough fuel to go down the road so uh, a unit this size would definitely be for a group or a cooperative 
However, it only takes one individual to run it. So, uh, you know, this unit right here retails for about $21,500. Um, a smaller unit uh, could be put together for smaller groups. And, uh, you know, uh, if they have a, a shortage of feed stocks, you know, it's, it's still possible to, for, you know, a couple people to, to make just a couple of hundred gallons a month. And they'd only have to spend, you know, maybe one or two weekends a month to make that fuel. So it's, uh, it's definitely a, uh, an investment that's uh, worth their time. You know, uh, when you look at how much fuel do you burn a year, well, we figured up our family burns just below $15,000 worth of fuel a year. So the, the distillery that I put together for myself, you know, I can produce that in just a, a few months' time off of a couple acres of land. And, uh, you know, there's, there's no food issue. You know, we had this land available. Uh, it's, uh, we swap it out with our garden, you know, and, and, and there's, there's more than enough room. And, the, you know, uh, uh, a, a, smaller, a smaller distillery, um, you know, would, uh, of course, be less expensive. Uh, and uh, it would require less time and less infrastructure. So this unit right here would be more uh, for somebody who is geared towards a, a business, uh, you know, the, if they were going to make this their business or if it was going to be the center point of a cooperative, an energy cooperative at a local level. Uh, but uh, ultimately, uh, to get back to, to my personal distillery at home, you know, I can run that thing uh, just a few months out of the year uh, to process the uh, sorghum that we grow in the field. And, and uh, about three months out of the year, I can produce enough fuel for us to run four vehicles for a year. So uh, this unit right here is, is quite a bit larger and, and uh, uh, there's a considerable m larger amount of production that, that, that comes from this. So, uh, you know, this, this unit right here is going gonna, is gonna to provide a lot of people with energy. Um, you know, and you just have to, it's, it's scalability. You have to look at the need, uh, you know, and, and bring the right tool for the right job. Carl, people are going to want to know how they go about getting permits. Well, the, the permutation process is, uh, is a, a fairly easy process, believe it or not. You know, a lot of people are scared of, uh, of government bureaucracy and red tape, but I can tell you from experience, um, every government office that I have dealt with, every person that I've come in contact with as far as the federal government and the state government, they have been as enthusiastic and helpful as, as I am about ethanol. You know, they, they want to see you succeed and they'll, they'll go to extra efforts to make sure that you do. So, um, as far as the permutation process goes, first you need to start with the federal government and you need to go to the TTB and get a federal uh, fuel alcohol producer permit. And once you have gotten that federal level permit, um, and it's uh, scalable of course, there's a small, medium and large permit. Um, and you know you're going to have to 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 look at you know how much fuel you're wanting to produce, and then ultimately you need to go to your state government, and I have uh, permits in both North Carolina and Wisconsin. Um, in North Carolina, uh, you know we deal with the State Department of Revenue down there, and and uh, we we've got to pay a tax on the fuel as soon as it's produced, and our tax rate down there is pretty high as far as highway use. But in Wisconsin. You know, I, I talked to the, the people at the State Department of Revenue up here. They're very helpful. They're very nice. And they were actually able to, to get us some temporary permits. Um, this permit right here is for, it says alcohol beverage, but uh, there's actually two permits in Wisconsin. It's AB204 and MF205. And the MF, of course, stands for Motor Fuels 205. And uh, this is an annual return. You've got to claim it once a year. And uh, you know, if you're if you're using it, producing fuel alcohol for yourself, you know that's a uh, that's a once a year that you've got to claim how much you made and how much you've used. And uh, if you uh, want to retail sale fuel uh, commercially, you know you're going to have to pay a road use tax. But it's a very simple system to use. Um, it's very easy as far as accountability. Um, you know, you can, uh, in North Carolina, we have, a, it's, it's all in the software, you know, there's a program where I get online and I uh, register how much fuel I've produced in a month's time, and uh, um, they make the calculations from there, you know, in that, in that program. So it's, it's a very user-friendly system, and uh, I know that Wisconsin is, is getting a, a similar system um, in tow uh, right now, uh, and like I said, it's it's very user friendly. It's very easy to keep track of, and the people that you deal with, as far as these government agencies, are very very helpful. They want to see you succeed. So, this is not just a, a very doable uh, a doable uh, aspect of fuel alcohol. It's uh, 
it's the first step that you have got to take and, and it's the, one of the most important ones. So once you've, once you've got the permits, you know, um, and you uh, start keeping your records and producing fuel, it's, it's a, a pretty easy routine to get into. So uh, um, ultimately, uh, you know, it's, uh, like I said, it's the first step you've got to do um, in the, the journey of fuel alcohol and it's, it's uh, not a difficult one to take.